Hi, Ken from MakeTech here. In this video, we're going to have a look at fixing the Prusa i3 Mark IIIs 3D printer and using an STC1000 temperature control unit to control the temperature in the build chamber. Let's check it out. Okay, starting off with the 3D printer repair here. I had left the 3D printer with not enough filament one time when I was doing a print and it ran out um, overnight I guess it had just been sitting there with the hot end just baking that last little bit of filament that was in the melt zone and uh, that's just clogged up so I couldn't remember I actually built this 3d printer from the kit so I should have remembered how to uh, take it apart but that was a while ago so um, yeah I uh, took a few bolts out realized they were the wrong ones and then I got to the right area of the extruder assembly I guess you would say and uh, yeah once I got to the, the right part there it was quite easy to find the problem and uh, yeah I cleared that out and luckily with my previous attempts at cleaning it out without disassembling it I, uh, I seemed to have not damaged it at all which is awesome so then the uh, the second part of the repair with this one was actually from a early on I must have had the Z height sensor that had collided with the print and whether that was because the print was peeling up or for whatever reason the print had failed and uh, yeah so I'd reattached the probe uh, since then but um, it was on a not uh, not completely vertical and I think that was causing issues as well and um, so now I've reattached that with a little bit of extra a bit of extra structural integrity in the form of just a three millimeter bolt that I've put in there for some triangulation and that's just all epoxied together it's probably quite ugly I won't show a photo of it but it works really well so that's awesome All it is is just a light globe coming up through the base of the chamber and so that's like a halogen globe. Uh, yeah, so we're sitting at about 23 degrees in here now and should get to 45 to 50 degrees. I find printing ABS you really want uh, like 50 degrees is really quite um, ideal so that could be more powerful than maybe if I have two of those. And for now, I just want to get this print going, and maybe while I start doing this print, I'll put this SCC 1000 module together. That just needs to um, just basically be assembled, and then I can actually plug in the light that I've got there into the heater. And then the cooler, I'm thinking I can do is set that up so that there's an alarm plugged into that, so that'll just be like a siren running on a 12-volt uh, plug pack. Here's the final stage of the STC1000 unit being assembled and I'm going to set that to 50 degrees Celsius and then we're ready to go. So we've got heating and cooling on the top there, I've labelled that, make tech products limit on the box. That light now runs through here, so yeah we're doing alright for heat at the moment actually, we've got 42 degrees. 3D printer wasn't uh, too much of a drama in the end once I worked out how to open up the hot end and just clear out the bit of ABS that had sort of clogged up in the sleeve in the hot end. Managed to get a print out. Um, this is the, the fan shroud printed out quite nicely. And there's the fan mounted on there with a fan grill. So that's uh, not too bad. The heated build chamber or heated enclosure was running through the STC 1000 uh, the, yeah, the, the heating light globe was running through the STC 1000 so that's running through here and uh, yeah that worked quite well they're quite good they're cheap uh, it's cheaper than an Arduino if you're going to buy an Arduino and a relay module you don't have to do any like Arduino programming on the computer but you just have to 
set your temperatures and hysteresis and then you're good to go and then um, yeah, as I think I mentioned before you could add the cooling. The cooling output could be used for an alarm so that if it does get too hot and it wants to try and cool down well then you know you've got a problem because it shouldn't really get that hot and so that means something's gone wrong and so you could add a 12 volt power supply onto a siren and then for example in the workshop here I might, might mount the siren outside so if I'm in, uh, inside asleep or something then I can come out here and check it out and see what's going on you know, if there's a fire, then hopefully I can do that before it gets too serious. So, um, but yeah, that's one option with the SDC 1000. To be honest, I, I probably, yeah, I will actually use the 12 volt system that I've got in conjunction with this. In the next video, I will move the 12 volt uh, heating system that I've got from my other 3D printer into this one because I don't use that one anymore. And uh, yeah, well, we can have a look at how I've done that. And uh, I haven't seen anyone use the method that I've used on that one either, which is um, yeah, obviously that'll be something valuable to add to the community and hopefully it'll help someone out. So yeah, I'll leave it at that for this video. And uh, thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already because I've got more content coming out like this to follow up. Cheers, all the best, bye.